This is the Halo Pack, a Unity plugin that lets you add floating accessories and animated halos to your character with just a few clicks. From a simple blue archive style halo to a fully animated emoji. From a floating weapon behind your character's back to a full clock behind their head. Why limit your creativity in character design to just basic clothes and hair? With just a few floating objects, you can instantly make your character look more polished and professional. You don't even need any Unity experience. Just create your 3D models and images in Blender and Photoshop, and Halo Pack will bring them to life. I'll walk you through every feature in Halo Pack one by one, so that by the end of this video, your VTuber or Unity character can truly stand out. There are two versions of the Halo Pack the free version and the pro version. I'll go over the differences later in this video so you can decide whether to stick to the free version or upgrade to pro later. And don't worry, I'm perfectly fine if you stick with the free version. After all, my goal is to give indie VTubers all the tools they need to stand out. To get this plugin, go to my coffee page link in the description. In the receipt page, you scroll down and click view content. Download the Unity template project zip file and the Halo Pack Unity package. Extract the template project zip file in Windows Explorer and open it using Unity Hub. If Unity warns you about the version, just follow its instruction and install the missing version. Do not change the Unity version. Once Unity opens, double-click on the scene object in the project window. Then go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package and choose the Halo Pack Unity package file. Select all and click import. If you see the Reforge mode menu at the top, you've installed the plugin correctly. From here, you can import your character into the project and start using the Halo Pack. Now I'm going to explain the basic workflow for using the Halo Pack. We're going to start small by making a simple 2D Halo just like in Blue Archive. With the Halo Pack window open, Let's start by dragging our character model into the target field. Then let's move this window to the right so we can see our character clearly in the scene window. The first thing we need in a halo is to add an anchor object. In the object hierarchy, click Add New Object and choose Anchor. And you can see a new object has been added to the object hierarchy. Let's click on it to open its properties on the right side and rename it to head to keep things organized. On its own, the anchor object doesn't display anything. Its only purpose is to decide where our halo is attached to our character's body. In this case, we want to choose the head body part from the attach to drop down menu. Next, we need a body object to display our 2D image. Again, click on add new object, but this time choose body. Then, let's rename this to Halo Image. By default, this will add a cube inside our character's head. We can move this up by changing the Y position value. Next, let's change the object type to Image 2D so we can add our own 2D image. If you haven't made it yet, I've included a lot of PSD template files in the Examples folder so you can easily make your own in Photoshop. If you already have an image file ready, just drag it from the Windows Explorer to the Assets folder in the project window. Then drag the file from the project window to the image field. Then we can adjust the body's position, rotation, and scale so it sits nicely above the character's head. Optionally, you can also change your image color with the color field. But you can also just color the image yourself in Photoshop before putting it into Halo Pack. If you want a simple glow effect, you can duplicate this 2D image in the hierarchy, swap its image for a glow layer, and then change the color slightly for a simple outer glow effect. Once you're happy with how the halo looks, we can go ahead and finalize this by going into the export option. There are a lot of options available here in the drop-down menu. If you want to use it for VTubing, choose VC Face and VNN. But if you want to use it for Unity game development, choose one of the many Unity options. And then click Finalize. And now we're done with Halo Pack. For VTubing, select your character in the Unity hierarchy window, 
open the VSF SDK menu and click Export Avatar Bundle. Then put the VSF Avatar file into VCFS or Pinion, and you'll see your character with your custom Halo. And that is the basic workflow for using the Halo Pack. Of course, if that's all Halo Pack is about, then it would be a boring and useless tool. So let's talk about some extra features. Instead of using a 2D image, you can also use a custom 3D model. Just simply choose the custom option in the object type. Again, if you already have a custom 3D model, drag it into the assets folder first, and then drag the new file from the assets folder to the custom model field. Of course, different models have different scale values, so you might need to enlarge them afterwards. And just like before, in the examples folder, I have provided several ready-to-use 3D models, each with their own template Blender file. And remember that you can always mix and match between 2D images and 3D models for your Halo, just like in Blue Archive. Either 2D or 3D, you will quickly realize that the Halo looks very stiff right now. It doesn't feel like an organic part of your character model. It doesn't have inertia. So let's make the Halo slightly bouncy, like it's connected with a rubber band. In the anchor setting, there is an option to enable the physics wobble animation. When you turn this on, you will most likely need to readjust the position of your halo using the Y position and the string length setting. The string direction determines where the halo is located. You can put the halo on the top as usual, on the back of the head, or even sideways. Then there is the snap speed setting. This will change how fast the halo will snap back to its original position. You can set this individually for each rotating axis. In general, the higher the value, the less the objects will move. But finding the right value will require you to do some testing. To do that, simply go to the export option and set it to wobble testing. Click finalize and go to the play mode. The Halo Pack will perform several custom animations on the character's head so you can see how the Halo moves. If you are not satisfied, no worries. We can exit play mode, go back to the Halo Pack again, drag in your model, and click OK to reset your model. Then we can adjust some wobble values again. The Halo Pack will always remember your last setting, even if you decide to change the character model. Ultimately, if you set it right, you will have a halo that looks like an extension of their body part. It moves just like their hair. And naturally, you can also enable the physics collision option in the anchor. This will turn your halo into a physical object you can touch. And in theory, this should also allow you to flick your halo in your VTubing application if it supports hand tracking. And this tool is not just for making halos. Maybe you just want to have a weapon on your character's back. In that case, just set the anchor to custom and drag in your character's spine. Then drag in your staff model to the body. Done! Now your character carries a weapon and it works in both VTubing and Unity gameplay. Or maybe you want to add wings. Same thing. Create an anchor with six bodies for each wing parts. Boom! Now you are an angel. And if you are an expert in Unity shaders, you can use your own custom shader on your model. And remember, everything you've seen so far is totally free. You don't have to pay me anything to use these features. So there is no reason for you not to use Halo Pack to upgrade your VTubing model. Again, my goal with the Halo Pack is to help you add real creativity to your VTubing model and make it look more polished and professional without needing you to do coding or following hour-long YouTube tutorials. If you want to unlock even more features, then please check out the Pro version. This costs $12.49, but it gives you advanced features like adding visual effects and animations to your Halo. More importantly, by buying the Pro version, you will help support my work so I can keep making new tools for the Feroid community. Once you buy my tools, it will be yours forever. Future updates will be provided for free, and you're free to modify it or use it for commercial purposes, like doing commissions to make Feroid models for your clients. 
So let's go over these new features one by one, starting with animations. On a body object, simply click on the Add Animation button and choose which animation you want to add for this object. You can have multiple animations active at the same time. Each animation's properties will be displayed below the transform field. Whenever you want to remove an animation, just click the X button next to it. And for quick reference, every active animation is represented by icons in the object hierarchy. And by the way, if you're not sure what each property does, in all of my tools, you can simply hover over every text and there will be a tooltip description to explain it. And if you're still lost, you can press the help button on the top right and it will bring you to my tutorial video on YouTube. This is just my standard philosophy when designing my tools because I want everyone to be able to use them even if you never used Unity before. Now let's go over each animation one by one so I can explain what they do and show you some examples where you might want to use them. Color animation is pretty straightforward. First, you can choose what color property you want to modify in this object. The Halo Pack will automatically search for all color properties in this object, even if you use custom shaders like this ring earlier. Then, you can set up the gradient of color to cycle through. Clicking on the bottom pins of the gradient will allow you to add a new color keyframe. Clicking on top will allow you to add a new opacity keyframe to change its transparency. You can add as many keyframes as you want. You can even make a rainbow transition if you really want to. If you want to delete the keyframes, simply click and drag it down to remove it. Optionally, you can also change the blend mode if you want no transition between colors at all. Frequency determines how many cycles occur per second. Lower values mean a slower cycle. And finally, you can also set up a pause between each cycle in seconds. Now, if you just want to make a Blue Archive-inspired halo, then you can easily achieve that with just one color and lowering the opacity at the end of the transition. If you have a glow image, you might want to apply color animation on just the glow part. But of course, there is no limit to what color transition you want to make for your halo. Next up, Bounce Animation creates an alternating position. Angle is the orientation of the bounce in X and Z angles. That means you can change the bounce from top to bottom to sideways and anything in between. Frequency and pause properties behave exactly the same as the color property, so I'm going to skip that. Amplitude controls how far the object will go before returning back. And Visualize will draw a path of the bounce itself. You can easily turn this off and change the color if you find it distracting. For a Blue Archive inspired Halo, you just want to make a simple up and down bounce at low frequency. Combine this with the color animation and you can already recreate any Halo in that game on your own. Take a step further and you can create a slightly different bounce for different objects, like this shattered Halo. This gives your character design a storytelling potential. What does it mean if your character has a shattered halo? Are they a fallen angel or battle-hardened veteran? Next up, rotation animation controls the spin. You can set the rotation speed in degrees per second for each axis, and it can be negative for a counterclockwise rotation. This is the key if you want to have a very animated halo beyond Blue Archive's design. The simplest example is to use it for a gear design and a sci-fi halo. Each layer rotates at a slightly different speed. Or change the anchor to your eyes. And now you have an aimbot scythe for your next battle royale. Or you can take this even further by making a full clock halo behind your character's head. Also, remember that you can use halo pack with no halo or floating objects at all. This crank animation is just pure rotation. Next, scale animation controls the alternating size of an object. Target size is in multiples of 1, so setting it to 1 will not change the size. But setting it to 1.5 will make it 50% bigger, and setting it to 0.5 will make it 50% smaller. You can also set it to 0 to get a shrinking out animation, 
or set a different value for each axis. In my opinion, this is the best animation to play with if you want to add a cute factor to your halo. It is best used in combination with other animations, like with color to create a fade in fade out transition. And in this advanced example, I only animate the Y size to zero to create a blinking animation. Combine it with sideway bounce and a bit of animation curve, we can have a cute halo that blinks and looks around. And finally, the most powerful animation of them all is Orbit. Adding this animation will make it so that the body object will orbit its parent, which is the first object above it with less indent than itself in the object hierarchy. Now let's talk about the settings in Orbit. I highly recommend you to stop the animation first when adjusting the offset property. This will control the starting position of the orbit in 360 degree. Tilt controls the angles of the orbital path in X and Z rotations. Radius controls the size of the orbital path, and Speed controls the orbital speed in degrees per second. And of course, you can also set it to negative for a counterclockwise rotation. In general, you want to use Orbit if you have multiple objects as your halo, like having crystal fragments above your head. Or it can be a series of tarot cards around your character's body. Or you can go crazy and have an entire solar system behind your character's head. Aside from animations, you will also have one extra object type called VFX. You can adjust the sliders in each VFX to customize the appearance to your liking. I'm also taking suggestions in the comment section down below on what VFX you'd like to see added in the next update. Of course, there are a lot more things I want to talk about with the Halo Pack, like some advanced techniques on how to use animation curves with bounce to make a non-circular orbit. But unfortunately, this video has gone on for way too long for my taste, so if you'd like a dedicated tutorial on that, then please let me know in the comment section down below. For now, that's pretty much everything you need to know to use the Halo Pack. Once again, the Halo Pack is totally free, free to use for commercial purpose, and you will get free future updates. But if you'd like to get extra features and help support me making more of these free tutorials and tools, then you can help me financially by purchasing the pro version or by supporting me on Patreon, like all of these cool patrons on the screen. Comment down below if you found any bugs, ideas, or questions, or join our Discord server to get more dedicated help. While you're here, why not check out my previous tool, the Expression Pack? It's totally free as well. It will give you plenty of anime expressions you can easily mix and match and customize to your needs. Nearly 10,000 people have already tried the free version. You should at least check it out, right? And with that, I think I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.